Hello everyone and welcome back to Mount Aplant Warband with the Nova Aetas mod and uh, last time we left off with our successful crusade we were victorious and we have managed to liberate the holy city of Hiroshima from the clutches of the Serenite Sultanate uh, unfortunately now we actually have to hold it and that might be a little bit more difficult than actually taking the city but we will see uh, how things go in today's episode. Now um, I do want to show off something very important uh, today and that is the kingdom management because that's one of the new features uh, that this mod implements, one of the major new features that is inherently different from the way things are handled in Warband uh, Native or in, in other mods. So that's definitely something we're going to have to spend quite some time uh, at uh, well, exploring this feature. But yeah, for now, what we need to do is we actually just need to go for it a little bit. We'll have, we'll see our uh, brothers in faith uh, leaving the Holy Lands because we have reclaimed the Holy City and now it's on us to hold it. So uh, we now possess land in our own name without being tied to any kingdom. Now there was a little bit of a confusion going on uh, towards the end of last episode, but I made sure to check everything and we are in fact our own uh, lord or a king in our own right. But yeah, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. We will check that out right now. So uh, this makes us a monarch in our own right with our court ter temporarily located at Hiroshima. So uh, this is basically pretty standard stuff. We now first of all get to um, pick a chancellor who can then handle the, phase of, uh, the affairs of state. And we could actually appoint a prominent citizen from the area, but uh, I've already tried that and that actually doesn't do anything. Basically just, just has a, um, well, it, it creates a chancellor that can't really do much. So we will have to eventually pick one of our companions. And I think we might as well just go with Quinius, simply because Serafina is a little bit better fighter. So yeah, we're gonna go with Quinius. Yes, he has a new chancellor, very nice. And uh, now here's one of the new things. We actually get to choose our title. So uh, those are the titles we can choose from. And basically each of these titles represents one of the cultures in game. So King is for Swadia, I believe. Tsar is for the Vejirs. Khan is for the Kurgids. Uh, Sultans for the Serenites, obviously. Prince for the Rodox. Anti-Pope is for, well, I guess the Papacy. Ja, I'm actually not too sure. Archduke is probably also Swadian, not, not too sure on that. Nordic King is for the Nords. Uh, Doge is for the Merchant Republic of Zendar. And Grand Maester is, or Grand Master, actually Grand Maester is something different. Uh, Grand Master is for the Agonic Order. And I'm actually going to go with the Grand Master here because I've already decided on how I kind of want to play my faction now. Well, well I'm not actually going to be my own factions. Let's say it like this. I have decided I want to become a vassal of the papacy simply because I don't really want to, I, I don't think I can take on the Serenites on my own just yet, but we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later. I feel like I uh, want to have the title of a grand master, uh, kind of have my own knightly order in a sense. Um, so that's what we're going to pick. Um, and now we actually get to choose the name of our new kingdom. That's also pretty standard stuff. And we should just note that it will have the prefix of Kingdom of. So even though I don't actually want it to be a kingdom, we'll still call it the Kingdom of the Holy Sepulchre. Because if you remember when we read the text for the crusade, when the crusade was first announced, it said that we would be awarded with the title of the Advocate or Advocate of the Holy Sepulchre. So I feel like it only makes sense if that is the name of our realm. So there you go, continue. Yes, and now we actually get to choose a color. Um, very nice, we can actually have a preview here, which is amazing. And I think we're just gonna go with purple. Purple obviously representing uh, the Byzantine Empire. It just, it has something very royal. So I, I kind of like that. But yeah, we're just gonna go with that. Um, this is kind of a bug, but yeah, Quinius has left our party as he is now our chancellor. So uh, we're gonna quickly check this out. As you can see, this is now kingdom, the kingdom of the Holy Sepulchre, and we hold the Holy City as well as three, uh, well, villages, but they've all been looted. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So we're gonna go in here, and we will, um, not gonna do any of this, uh, I guess we could manage the garrison. We will have to do that later. But for now, let's actually quickly um, go into the castle because we can now talk to our chancellor. Now, unfortunately, the way... Yeah, I guess the way things work in, in this mod right now is that... Um, you can't really do much without your counselors. Uh, so the, the chancellor is obviously one of the counselors, and then you have many more. 
but in order to appoint them, right? So if I want to go ahead, talk to Quinius here and appoint a new member, uh, you can see that they will actually cost 10,000 florins. And I could obviously pay that out of my own coffers. Um, well, I, I can't, in fact, um, because in uh, Nova Etas, each realm, each kingdom, as well as each town and village has their own treasury. And um, now, usually the way it works is you should start off as someone who owns a village, then eventually a town, and then you go into the kingdom management as things get uh, increasingly more complex as you, well, rise in ranks. Um, but we just jumped in as a new king. And so things are very complicated and I can't really go over all of the things here, obviously because I don't know all of the things and also it would fill more than just one episode and obviously want to show you a couple other things as well. But basically we need to have a council of nobles and they all cost 10,000 florins which we have to pay from our kingdom's treasury. And at the, at the moment, since we just founded our kingdom, we don't actually have any money in the treasury. So we're gonna have to wait just a little bit for, um, well, for the new budget uh, to, to come up. And as you can see, yes, uh, that's very bad. The Serenade Sultan has decided to already lay siege. And that's very problematic because as you could see, our brothers in faith have left us. So yeah, we no longer have anyone fighting with us. So yeah, let's actually quickly go into the castle because I do believe we already have... No, we do not yet have... Um, actually, we might. You know what? Let's just go and check because we might actually already have gotten our report and um, that was this pop-up that we had right there. And um, let me see. No, we still have no money. Okay, we have to wait a little more. Okay, never mind then. Um, but yeah, let's wait here for some time because getting outside is a little bit dangerous. So we should get our report anytime soon. There it is, the weekly kingdom budget. So this is different from our personal budget. I cannot stress this enough. So um, we still, uh, I, I think at least, uh, in our personal budget, we still get a little bit of money from our towns. I'm not too sure on this, um, but this right here, as I said, is for the kingdom. So we're making huge amounts from Hiroshima and the three villages, which is interesting because I thought they were looted, but maybe they're not looted anymore. Not too sure. We're also making a little bit of money from tariffs. We're not making anything from revenues, from investment revenues, but that is uh, because we have not invested anything in our kingdom yet. So, and now here comes one of the new things. So far, everything has been pretty standard, but gifts and investments from the covenants, uh, from the commoners. So basically, there are three factions. In fact, there are four factions, but in the grander scheme of the kingdom, there are only three factions that really matter. We have uh, the clergy, we have the nobility, and we have the commoners. And they, or amongst these three factions, um, power in our realm is distributed. So as you can see, the nobility ha holds the most power with 60%, the clergy has 30%, and the commoners, even though they make up most of the population, only have 10% power. And that kind of represents the, uh, well, I guess the power uh, distribution in medieval times. And yeah, you can also see a couple other things. We have religious uniformity, 77% which, yeah, is important because religion obviously plays a big role in this mod as well. We are Christian, I should remind you. Um, then we have the debts. We don't have any debts at the moment. And there's also research points. Right now we have zero out of thousand. A thousand is, I believe, needed in order to advance to the next stage. And every stage, or at least every other stage, offers some benefits for, uh, the, for your troops especially, but also gives you extra income. Many things we'll have to discuss, I know. Uh, this is not much for you, but it's, well, not only much for you, but it's also a lot of, uh, for me to, to take in. So I'll try to not uh, go overboard here. But basically, as you can see here, you can invest in research and that will give you a certain amount of points and then your nation can advance technologically. And the developer of this mod has made sure or has made clear that it is very important for the player to invest in these kind of things. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll do, talk about this a little bit later. Now, also our state just costs a maintenance fee, as you can see, um, which, yeah, I guess is just there. It grows the, the bigger the state gets, but it should usually not be outweighed by the amount of money you make. Um, then we also have kind of a grand master's purse because as I said, all of this money that you can see here, all of the income as well as the expenses are not coming either into our own 
budget or out of our own budget that makes any sense the only thing that we actually get is 2500 so our personal wealth has just increased by 2500 however we can set that and we will do that in a second and then also our um our chancellors cost money so uh well well not just our, con uh, our counselors cost money and the first or the only counselor we have so far as a chancellor but each one costs 10,000, but they can also be changed. So yeah, in total, we have made a net gain of 162,000, which is very good. And now we can actually do something with that money. So we'll continue and we'll have to get into the castle once again and talk to our chancellor. Now, first things first, I want to appoint all of the other counselors that we have, because that will allow us to have a look at all of the options that are available to us. Now, by the way, this lady right here, Lady Anonia, uh, Anoia, Anoia of Suno. Uh, she's not actually annoying, but well, basically she's one of the pretenders we could press her claim, but I'm not very interested. So that's why I've been ignoring her so far. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to actually talk to him. I want to appoint new members for the council. Now, actually, before we do that, no, actually, we will do that. Never mind. Um, so, yeah. I think we're gonna do that for now. Uh, we're gonna just hire them. As you can see, they all cost 10,000 florins. Um, they will cost, this is their first weekly salary, yes. And uh, we'll have to pay that up front, and then it will be part of the weekly kingdom budget. So first, let's get a steward, then we're gonna get a diplomat, a treasurer, and a court chaplain, and we'll talk about what they do in a second. Um, other than that, there's one more thing I want to do. I don't wanna fire anyone, I don't wanna change the faction, but I want to choose a banner because so far I've not held any titles of my own which means I did not actually have a banner so definitely need to pick that and I already had a look at this and I felt like where was the one I wanted to go with um, I did think about getting across maybe but then again I find that very boring so instead I want to go with uh, this one right I, I simply like the, the look of this sword that looks really cool and this thing up there is also kind of interesting it's very similar to this one um, but yeah that I don't like so much so we're gonna go with this instead yes uh, no 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 never mind wait, wait damn it oh I think I should just click return all right uh, there you go that and return and now we have a new kingdom banner so um, let's have a quick look yeah this looks beautiful very nice now as you can see the banner of the other people they have their regular banner here and then they have these kind of crowns up there and that signifies their rank um, but we'll talk about that later as well for now we're just going to go back into the castle because now all of our uh, counselors should have arrived so yeah you can see and uh, the lady of suno right there and our chancellor quinny is here we don't really have to talk to him anymore at least not right now let's first talk to our court treasurer now i should mention that for all of you uh, who want to start this mod who want to start their own campaign here i highly recommend that you check out um when you, when you ch start your uh, i guess your kingdom you want them you want your counselors to provide you with information many things you can click on and there's so many there's some, some very important i guess information that they uh, provide you with i don't want to go over all of this i have clicked on this i've read everything here but that would take way too long and i don't think that would really make a whole lot of sense but uh, what we will do here is uh, we can obviously just go over the, the few options that we have we can pay off our debts we don't have any we have some money in the treasury uh, we can invest in trade, which is important as trade is obviously a huge source of income. However, trade is more, um, well, I guess trade is more efficient if you're at peace, obviously, because war destroys trade. So relying on trade is not a good idea if you're at war often. Uh, however, investing in your kingdom, that basically is the investment revenue page that you saw during the kingdom uh, report uh, basically that is not as profitable as trade but it is I guess more how should I say this it is it cannot get destroyed through war I should say so it, it's more reliable source of income um, we can also set our own purse and that's something I will do immediately because right now we're getting 2,500 florins each week but if you basically you can you can take up to 10,000 florins but the more you take yourself the more your counselors will take. So um, if we take 2,500, our counselors cost 10,000. If we take zero, our counselors uh, cost only 7,500 florins a week. So you can actually um, 
yeah, you can actually make it a little bit, or well, save a lot of money, I should say, if you reduce your kingdom's purse or grand maester's purse. So that's one thing we do. We can also, now that we have the treasurer, donate some of our own personal money to the kingdom's treasury, but I won't do that now because we have enough. And that is basically everything uh, here. Now we can also talk to the steward. Basically, the steward is the one that handles um, your vassals. You can improve their positions, but that's something I will not touch here because we don't have any vassals yet and I don't intend on getting anyone. Uh, we can also improve relations with them, of course, and we can. Uh, this is where you can actually invest in research. So basically, you can have a weekly progress where you have to spend some coins to get points towards these this 1000 uh, to reach the new, uh, the new, I guess, what's it called? The new stage, or you can um, have a one-time investment, basically. Uh, we're not gonna do any of this right now because, uh, yeah, I don't really intend on having this, on keeping this kingdom alive uh, for very long, but I just wanna show off a couple of the features. Now, court diplomat, this is actually kind of interesting. Um, I will talk to that later. In fact, no, I will do that right now. Uh, and we get to dispatch an emissary. Um, because I want to see if perhaps, perhaps we can make peace with the Serenite Sultanate. Now, I did say I don't actually want to have, want to be independent right now, but I might change my mind if we can have peace. So yeah, let's uh, dispatch an emissary. I want to have peace and we're going to send the only uh, person available, Serafina. Yes, please. Very nice. We don't have anyone else we can send, so there's not much we can do. And now, last but not least, the court chaplain. Uh, basically, he's the one in charge of our religion. And as I said, religion plays a big part in this, or pl plays a huge role in this mod. But so far, we're not going to concern ourselves with this too much. We can pray here as well, like we did in a church that gave, basically gives us one piety. No need to do that. And yeah, improving religious unity, there are several options. You can assign him as head inquisitor. You can spend some money, which is kind of interesting. That basically increases the uniformity by plus one. Now this is important because basically um, you get money tax depending on the uniformity of your kingdom, the religious uniformity, because only people that follow, you, follow your religion actually pay taxes, which is a bit strange of a concept because, you know, in, in history or historically, people that were of different religions had to actually pay more taxes than others. Um, but yeah, it, it's okay. It, it's just the way it was designed here, which is okay. Uh, that basically gives you as player an incentive to keep your religious unity high. Now, 77% means we're going to get 77% of all of the tax revenue. Uh, and if it's at 100, we obviously get the full. But yeah, there's no need to Im increase that at this moment for several reasons. So yeah, I think what we're going to do now is just uh, wait a little bit. Um, in fact, what we're going to do actually is go to the marketplace here. I want to sell a couple of things because we still have a lot of floor here, flower or whatever it's called, that I don't really want, at least not that much, because it does not give much morale and it takes away huge amounts of space, obviously, so I'd rather sell this off. 700, that's actually pretty decent. We have a little bit of wine left. I think I want to get a little bit more water. Since we are in the desert, water is obviously quite useful and I think a little bit more bread cannot hurt either. So yeah, because that gives way more um, party morale. So yeah, we're gonna go with this. We have ale left and I guess I guess we'll keep this around as well. So we'll actually receive 77 thrones. Very good. Um, other than that, there's not much I want to do here. Could visit the tavern. Now I do want to manage the garrison here because um, something I found out later was that, well later, I found out earlier I should say, uh, in one of my private games is that um, crusaders that are not in the Holy Land uh, well, at least I think so, um, will disband after some time. So basically, if we were to run around with these people, we would lose them if we were to lose, uh, if we were to leave the holy city. Um, but if they stay in the garrison, at least to my knowledge, they stay. So they, you don't lose the crusaders. And since we paid quite a lot of money for them, I feel like it, uh, you know, I, I want to keep them. So we're going to all give these guys, give all the crusaders to the... Uh, to the garrison here the rest we can keep and we're also going to take away all of these guys yes uh crossbowmen swati and pikemen nordic heavy infantry veteran 
and U2 as well, and the Nordic Huskal, and that's it. So the rest are just Crusader troops, and you I have as my personal guard. Very nice. Anything else I want to do? We could visit the mosque, which is interesting because right now, even though we have 77 uh, religious unity uh, or uniformity, it actually seems as though our town is still Muslim. Um, but that's something we're also going to talk about a little bit later. For now, I think I've pretty much done everything. We can have a look at the town management, but we'll have a look at that later as well. Uh, for now, uh, yeah, I think we're just going to wait here for some time, see if we can perhaps enter uh, a truce with the Sultanate, uh, the Sinite Sultanate. Um, but it's very likely that this is not going to happen. Now, uh, a lot of these people have been indicted. Um, Actually, no, never mind. Okay. Um, we're basically just waiting for our companion to come back. And she should probably bring us news of a... Well, of the Sheikh that... Uh, yeah, I would say he's anxious to reclaim old lands. And therefore, he does not want to, uh, to enter a truce. That's very annoying. Um, so that means we're going to have to stay at war. So basically, what I'm going to do now is I will leave this town to its own devices we're going to head onto our ship hopefully we're going to be able to do that and we will head over to pope gregory who has started this crusade and we'll ask if we can become one of his vassals and he will accept most likely and that will then protect us from the serenites now as i said i have done this before and there's actually a, a weird bug that we're most likely going to encounter right now um but yeah there's a reason that i will have to do it this way but we'll talk about this if it pops up so for now let's just try and leave we're immediately being followed that's very annoying ah uh, well we're gonna have to fight to the end but Honestly, there's not much we can do. We have 51 troops against 500. Um, we could have stayed in the city and defended. And obviously that would have been a much better idea because all of the Crusaders are over there. And, uh, well, we would have the de defensive position. Uh, the, way, the, well, the reason I've not done this is because when I previously did this, when I was previously trying to protect the city from this uh, invasion, uh, well, I got stuck in the city. Uh, and you will see what I mean exactly, uh, well, in, in a couple of uh, seconds. Uh, right now, we actually have a cross here. That's very interesting. I've not seen this before. But we... Is that our relic? Might be that we are carrying a relic. That's really cool. Okay, yeah. Obviously, we're going to get slaughtered here. So, there's not really much reason to fight. But I'll do it anyway, I suppose. Yes, we'll try and kill as many of these Serenites as possible. But it's not going to be many. Oh. And there goes Serfina. Come on. I mean, I can deal some damage. It's just... Okay, I'm going to die very soon. Come on. Can we kill some of these? Oh my god, look how many men they bring. It's ridiculous. Alright, we got one. It seems like all my troops are just dying. Um, so, maybe I should have just left them all. Oh, there we are. We're dead. Okay, well, that's, that's not good. Um, I think we can just leave now. Yes. Okay, we're going to get captured, most likely. Uh, we could try... Ch well, I should have probably just tried to leave. But honestly, at this point, we're just going to let everyone charge in to get this over quickly. Basically, what's going to happen, they're going to capture us. And yeah, um, the only, as I said, the only reason I'm doing this is because I didn't want to get stuck in the city as I did previously, as that is obviously uh, kind of a bug. And yeah, it, it made me, it forced me to abandon my save. And that is obviously not good. So yeah, uh, can we, oh my god, how many horsemen do they have? What the heck? Okay, we've been defeated once again. Can we now just, uh, uh, can we just leave? It's, can we just surrender or something? Uh, yeah, all right, you know what? I think we're just gonna surrender. This is this is pointless. So we lost a lot of m money, and we're not gonna lose too many things. Um, okay, we didn't lose any good stuff, it looks like. So they're besieging our city now, but basically what happened is, um, in all my playthroughs, they besieged the city, and they took it successfully, uh, obviously, and, but then I was still, I, I stayed in control of the city, which is just incredibly 
strange, but yeah, I basically, I kept the city, even though I got the notification that they took it over. So we're going to try and replicate this. We're going to make uh, our way to our ships and we'll set sail for the, uh, for the papacy. So I'll come back once we have met with Pope Gregor. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys. So uh, it seems as though that the buck did not yet happen. It did not appear. I was able to make my way over to the Pope fast enough. Uh, we have currently uh, a battle going on here, as you can see. But so far, our brave crusaders have been able to hold off. Now, so now, it, you know, in retrospect, I think it was incredibly stupid that I took these troops out of the garrison. Uh, I basically just butchered them. That was stupid. I should not have done that, but I'm not going to uh, reload this. I'm just going to roll with it now. Um, so basically, I've been traveling all the way over here. Uh, I've landed in the port of Zendar, and I've traveled to meet Pope Gregory. And now we're just going to talk to him, and I will offer him my vassalage. And yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Um, basically what this is going to do, he will accept it most likely. Yes, I am ready, my lord, of course. Um, and that will basically put us at peace with the Serenite Sultanate. And that's very nice uh, because we actually get to keep not only our town, but also our villages. And I can then show you the town and village management, which is also incredibly amazing in this mod. But that will obviously, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, my kingdom no longer holds any land. That is because I am... Let me quickly see this. Let me see the factions. So yeah, our faction is no longer here. That's because I just swore allegiance. But now the papacy is in control of this. But I am actually, I'm actually the one who holds it. So this war, this battle should be over then. Because let's have a quick look actually at the factions once again. Uh, the papal state is here. We are one of their vassals. And I am the one who holds the three villages as well as this one castle. I'm apparently a prisoner of the Rodox, but that's not actually true. Um, so, yeah, whatever. Um, so, basically, I I think we're just going to have to go back now and see if uh, this is being resolved, if this battle ends. I guess I could just wait there. Um, and now we have advanced in class. So now because we actually hold land, we... Um, we have a new rank. So the Pope, the glorious Pope has granted you a noble title. We are now a Baron. Uh, awesome. So we belong to the nobility. And if we have, if we bring up the character's overview, we are no longer an aristocrat. We are now Baron uh, Tobias of the Papal State. Very sweet. We also have our estates here. And yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Let's uh, actually quickly go back. And yeah, um, for some reason, we are shown a foot, even though... We, okay, yeah, welcome back. We have our Chancellor back. He's now known, this is also a weird bug. He's now no longer known as just Quinius. He's now going to be Chancellor Quinius. And that he's going to be forever, probably. Maybe if I reload, things will be different. Not too sure. Um, now, unfortunately, Serafina is now gone. I will have to try and find her. Uh, but we will probably do that. Okay, um, yeah, I've tried to switch out my horse for some reason. This is not uh, accepted as a regular horse. Don't really know what's up with this and yeah i think we're just gonna make our way back now well we're gonna go to zendar and try and make our way back to aldurias um okay we're now actually a wiscont we have been granted the honorific title of wisconti and yeah this is one thing i should show you so we have well actually we did have our banner hmm this is very strange there's some really strange things going on because uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's a little tiny crown, a little tiny crown banner right here above our head. And you can also see that here next to next to the Pope, I believe. There's a little one as well. And I think this guy has one right. Can you see? Do you see what I mean? Right there. This banner is actually supposed to be on top of your regular banner. So I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um, this might be a bug. Maybe that will change once I reload the title. But basically, just signifies our rank, our rank as a vassal. So we have started off as a baron, then Wiscont, and now we're also a count. And this is well, that sounds like count. Uh, we're, we're conti, I guess, whatever it's called, a count, I suppose. An old title bringing much respect, and that basically just signifies our rank, I guess. Um, 
Okay, another uh, trade event here. Strange, funny sounds caress your ears. They come from a party in the nearby town. You join the feast and take part in the eating. There's a lot of food available. So eat as much as there is. Uh, 10 sausages, but a bad health trait. Yeah, I don't want that. 60% um, of bad health trait, 50 of no. So 70% of a good one. So obviously we're gonna go with the last one. It doesn't cost us anything. There's just a chance that we get a good health trait. So we're gonna go with option four. There we go. And slim. Uh, it looks like this person is fasting too many times. The strength are diminishing. What about eating a bit food? What? That is supposed to be a good... Oh, man. All right. Well, that's... That's... I don't know why this is a good trade, apparently. Um, we have... Ooh. His Majesty granted you the title of Margrave. Um, most people will bow before your greatness. Oh, wow. We're rising. I wonder how high we're going to raise. Uh, rise. But yeah, that's... That's kind of annoying. Didn't we did we have the healthy we had the healthy trait before and now we're slim. Hmm. Not too sure. I'm pretty sure that last time I went with this I went for this event, I picked the same option and I was and I was actually uh, healthy. Oh, and by the way, it now changed. So I'm not sure what happened there, but as you can see, we actually now have these crowns above the uh, banners again. That's very cool. So uh, basically the uh, this guy has I don't know what kind of thing that is, but yeah, we have this crown, and that signifies our rank as a Mark Gray, Mark Grave, or whatever. So yeah, that's cool. We're gonna make our way to Zenda, and I guess not just to Zenda, but we will also go back to our own town, which I hope. Actually, let me quickly check that. Stop here. Let me quickly check if the battle is over now, because that's obviously very important. Yes, the battle's over. Hiroshima is part of the Papal State. We have retained our uh, town. So I guess uh, this would make a good point to end this episode. Basically, I wanted to show you a little bit of the uh, kingdom management. Um, I might go back to that once I actually properly found my, my own uh, realm. But I will do that once I have a little bit more right to rule. And once I have better finances. And maybe some more troops. For now, there's more things I want to show you. If you remember, I wanted to show you the new world and I was actually thinking about setting up a colony. So that's something I'm going to do beforehand. And uh, I will uh, do a little bit uh, of the things here that I need to do in, in, in preparation of camera. And then I will come back next time once I can actually go ahead and show you the new world. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching uh, and I'll uh, see you guys next time.